On number 14, use equation 1, whatever that is, find the power series. You're not going to remember what equation 1 is. But let's... There. Let's find the power series. Well, I don't know what natural log of x is. But I know that if I take a derivative of x, wouldn't the derivative of this be 1 over 1 minus x by the chain root times negative 1? Wouldn't you say that's negative the series n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n? Doesn't this match what I want literally? And automatically on the side, absolute value of x is less than 1. I got that out of the way, right? And now I say, wait a minute, but I didn't have a derivative. I want it natural log of 1 minus x, which is f of x. How are the green and the blue related? The green is the integral of this. So, natural log of 1 minus x is actually, how do you find that integral? You add 1 to the power, divide by that. Alright, and don't forget the c. If I'm given this, well, I could find the C because I know what that equal. If I throw a zero in, now, the key is, for you to find C, this must disappear. The only way that will disappear if X equals zero. So you're starting on the right, really. You're saying zero, that means you let X equal zero. That's the only way a series will disappear. That means it's a series. Uh, that means it's a zero, bunch of zeros. That is natural log of 1. In this case, c happened to be 0. So I could say natural log of 1 minus x is actually negative the series n equals 0 to infinity x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And this is the part I've been talking about that we're going to be very picky about. We're going to say natural log of 1 minus x equal negative the series. If I can make that x to the n at any price, I must to do that. Since we shifted this one down, we have to shift this n down. And to compensate, this has to go up. And that would be my answer. So you'll get used to this. Now, if you substitute n equals 0 in this series... And if you substitute n equal 1 in this series, you should get the same term. If you throw a 0 in, that is x to the 1 over 1. If you throw 1 in, so if it's at the price not starting at 0, that's a small price to pay. If I can get this to be x to the n, I must get that to be x to the n. Now in part b, now that you develop this, in part b they say, hey, you know what? Why don't you find us a series for x times natural log of x? Well, I already have natural log of 1 minus x. So wouldn't you say x add me the color. Wouldn't you say x natural log of 1 minus x is x times the series n equal 1 to infinity negative x to the n over n that negative. And wouldn't that be the series n equal 1 to infinity of negative x to the n plus 1 over n Guess what? We're going to fix it again. We're going to make that an x to the n. We're going to shift that one down. So I'm going to leave the negative up front. That's going to be x to the n. At what cost? At any cost. I'm going to have to shift this one down to match. And to compensate for the shifting down, this has to shift up. There it is. That would be my answer. I already found the interval of convergence up there. I don't even have to worry about playing with that at all. That's all there is. And now they say, by letting x equal, and this is something that I did. I'll show you in a minute. So, by letting x equal 1 half. Well, they're talking about a. I know natural log of 1 minus x is, and what did we say that was? That was right there negative the series n equal 1 to infinity x to the n over n. They're saying if you let x equal 1 half, this says natural log of 1 minus 1 half equal negative the series n equal 1 to infinity of 
1 half to the n over n. And wouldn't you say that's natural log of 1 half? Isn't that 1 over 2 to the n times n? And isn't this natural log of 1 minus natural log of 2? Isn't that a 0? And if I divide by a negative, doesn't that mean that natural log of 2 is actually the series n equal 1 to infinity of 1 over n times 2 to the n? How significant is that? This is an irrational number, and I'm saying it's equal. I'm not saying it's approximate, I'm saying it's exactly equal. And I plug this in my calculator. I let n equal 1, 2. I went to 5. I just use this series, and I put in a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5. And this is what I got. And when I threw this in a calculator, this is what I got. Only five terms. So I'm getting very close to the answer very quickly. That's a big deal. Nowadays, it's not a big deal for you guys, but mathematically, it's a big deal because now you have a calculator and you can play with that. All right. Well, let's look at the next example. Problem number 16. 16, I want to find a power series representation for this. I start with this. So I'm looking at that and thinking, wait a minute. If I ignore the x squared completely, so let's say g equal inverse tangent of x squared. If I take g prime, cube, isn't it cube? You guys gotta be careful. That's a joke. 1 over 1 minus 1 plus x cubed times 3x squared. That is 3x squared times 1 over 1 minus a negative x cubed. You know where I'm going with this. 3x squared, the series, and equal 0 to infinity, negative x cubed to the n. And this is the series, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. It's going to be x, 3n plus 2, times f3. And now I'm going to say, what equals that? Well... I want inverse tangent of x cubed, which is g of x. And how are this related? Isn't this the integral of this? So I'm going to say here, the inverse tangent of x cubed is going to equal 3 times the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times x to the 3n plus 2 integral, which is, which would be the series, which would be c plus 3 times the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, add 1 to this power, divide by that, and if I throw a 0 in for c, uh, if I throw 0 in for x, I could find what c is. Well, that's a 0. That means c is a 0 that's gone. So I'm really looking at inverse tangent of x cubed to equal. If I factor a 3 out of this, isn't that n plus 1 and this cancel out? Wouldn't that be the series n equal 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 3n plus 3 divided by n plus 1. That's pretty much it. Now, I'm going to bring in this x squared. If you bring in an x squared, multiply by x squared, and you would say, well, this is simply the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 3n plus 6, divided by n plus 1. A radius of convergence comes right at this stage. You would say, 
absolute value of u one plugged in is less than one, that means absolute value of x is less than one. That's convergent between negative one. Okay, well, we're going to start on number 20. And to start with number 20, I'm glancing at this and figuring all right. I'm looking at sort of 1 over x cubed. And I know this relates to 1 over x because if you take a couple of derivatives of that, you will get this. So I'm going to start with let g equal 1 over 1 minus x. That's the series n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n automatically x is less than 1. The interval of convergence is negative 1 to 1 on this problem. I'm done. To get this to be a cube, I'm going to take a derivative first. So the first derivative, this is really 1 minus x to the negative 1. You bring the power down, subtract 1 from the power. So that is 1 over 1 minus x squared. That would be, remember, this is just like a polynomial. So every time you take a derivative, bring the power down, subtract one from the power, you have to adjust the base because you lost the term. And since I want x cubed that's not matching, I take another derivative of that. And if I take another derivative of this, that would be negative 2 into 1 minus x to the negative 3 times negative 1. So g double prime would be a positive 2 over 1 minus x cubed and if I take a derivative of this a derivative of this and a derivative of that that would be the series n equal 2 to infinity and bring the power down and subtract 1 from the power so that's what I got now if I take those and multiply this by it. Wouldn't and get rid of that 2 by dividing both sides by 2. I will get x squared plus x over 1 minus x cubed to be 1 half. And if I distribute that in, wouldn't that be the series n equal 2 to infinity? n into n minus 1 times x to the n plus the series n equal 2 to infinity of n n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1. For me to make any sense out of combining those in any possible way, I need those to be the same. I'm going to shift this one up, 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 and this one down. So this is the series n equal 2 to infinity n into n minus 1 x to the n. This is n equal 1 to infinity n plus 1 n x to the n. Now, the index doesn't match. Well, that's easy. I could fix that with ease. Can't I say... So the key is getting those to match. Now I want the index to match. If I pro throw n equal 1 in there, isn't that 1 times 2? times x to the 1 plus the series n equal 2 to infinity n into n plus 1 x to the n and now I could combine those two and that would look like 1 half and those two so the 2x is right there plus a series n equal 2 to infinity that's this part x to the n is common in both I want that separated completely and wouldn't that be n squared minus n plus n squared plus n? And that would be x plus the series n equal 2 to infinity of 2n squared over 2x to the n. Or simply x plus the series n equal 2 to infinity of n squared x to the n. That would be the solution to that. And we're going to stop here. Let me give you the homework for this part. And there's the homework.